Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your readings for August 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to make a big old shout out to the Leos out there. Happy, happy birthday to you. We are in Leo season right now. And I want to make a big old shout out to the August Virgos out there. Yeah, happy birthday to you guys as well. So I am back to my old format. Um, I have one central intro that I have recorded for everybody that everybody's going to see the same old thing and then we'll get into the reading yes so you will find a timestamp in the comments section that's pinned at the very top that will take you to the beginning of the actual reading so if you're watching multiple videos and you don't want to watch the intro over and over again you can use that timestamp I do recommend that you watch it at least once just so that you can get the general information may clear up some questions you may have yeah so I would love it if you guys would connect with me on social media. You can find the links to my, my social media accounts, both Instagram and Facebook, in the description box below. But Instagram is at divine underscore conversations. And Facebook is facebook.com slash divine conversations 2711. Yes, which is very similar to my actual email address. All right. These are a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like to look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below, including the readings that I offer. So just read through that and then hit me up. Let me know which reading you would like. If you can't decide if, or if you have trouble, go ahead and email me anyway and describe the situation a little bit and I will absolutely help you choose. Yeah. If you would like to get a, a personal reading, um, I do recommend that you reach out either via email or at the very least through Instagram. Um, I don't recommend that you send me a message on Facebook because I do not always get those right away. I, I've noticed that I, oh, first of all, I don't get a notification from Facebook saying that I have um, messages on that page. Um, so often when I find them, it's like, maybe sometimes days later. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so for those of you that kind of missed out or got lost or something, I apologize for that. But Facebook isn't the best way to reach out to me. You can reach out on Instagram. I do get those notifications and I do see that. I, I do check that more often. But ultimately, I'm really just going to send you to email. All right. So you might as well just, you know, cut the extra steps and just email me. Okay. Because that's really where I handle all of the personal readings. Keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So yes, this is a message coming through that's dated for August of 2019, but it does not have to resonate now. We could be talking about a situation that happened months prior, or we could talk about something that could be coming on months in advance. I do recommend that maybe you check in maybe at the, at the end of the month if you are catching this towards the beginning of the month to see if it resonates for you. But either way, or to see how it resonates for you, but either way, whenever you watch the video and it resonates at that time, then that is the message for you at that time, regardless of the date. Also, keep in mind that for the cross watchers out there, I am speaking directly to the zodiac sign in question, okay? But if you're watching the reading and it's resonating for you, then take that message. Okay. So what I may be saying for the Zodiac sign in question, let's say Aries or Leo, and you don't have that placement or you're not looking at it because you have Aries or Leo in your chart. And yet what I'm saying is resonating for you. Then maybe that message is in fact for the cross watcher and not the actual Zodiac sign in question. Again, it's a general reading. Take it as it resonates, but also please do not try to fit something into your life or into the, the situation that doesn't fit already. Like if you're watching and you're saying to yourself, Hmm, he's saying this, but that really doesn't resonate with my situation. Then let it go. Don't take it. Okay. Cause that means it's just not a message for you again general reading yeah okay um i guess that's it so with that said why don't we get started to, with the reading yeah <laughs> hey there gemini welcome to your reading for august 2019 thank you so much for tuning in so let's get into it you guys um i've got your pre-shuffle here and it's interesting because as i was channeling your energy i was saying you know, for August of 2019. Um, but I was hearing, I, I heard myself or like a voice within me say like, oops, a voice within me say, um, <clears throat> August to September. So this is a message that's coming through, um, you know, for dated for August of 2019. Um, and as always, these messages are timeless. So it really doesn't matter, um, when you watch this, 
reading, if it resonates for you at that time, then that's the message for you at that time. But specifically for some of you, this could be a situation in which you are dealing with this between August and September, okay? So this might kind of be a little bit of a double month message for you. That's just what's coming through here. Obviously, we'll see what happens once we get to September. But the first card that came out for you is the King of Wands, all right? This is Leo energy, uh, specifically because it's the king, it's the fixed sign of the fire suit, so that would be Leo. It could be Aries or Sagittarius. Doesn't really have to mean fire, okay? I mean, you could have Leo or another Aries, a fire sign in your chart, but it doesn't have to mean that. What's really coming through here is confidence, self-confidence. Um, it looks like some of you are kind of, you because the next card that came out was the Four of Pentacles. And as it flew out, it flew out and turned around. So it is in reverse, which denotes releasing something, letting go of something. And then the Page of Cups came out right after that. And with that one, I heard new love. Um, so it looks like some of you are releasing something in the process of releasing something in the process of uh, maybe even rediscovering yourselves or or going through like a, 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 um, a rebirth when it comes to emotions. Um, and your emotional reality. Some of you actually, especially with this Ace of Swords here, I really feel like some of you are coming to terms with some sort of emotional reality within you. Um, you may have reached some sort of epiphany, gotten some sort of clarity, some sort of truth. You're seeing something differently or maybe you're seeing something clearer than you may have in the past, which is allowing you to re-explore emotionally. Now, with the phrase new love that came through, this also could be a situation in which you are in a relationship with someone right now and it's helping you see things differently. Ace of Swords, all right? Or you could be generating, you could have a person in your life Life in which you are feeling this new sense of love, this new form of love, this new way of expressing or um, experiencing love that you may not have been open to in the past. Um, and that's allowing you to really step forward and be confident in yourself. I'm also getting a, a, a bit of a page of wands energy with this, only in terms of the fact of there's a, there's a level of self-discovery that I'm feeling here. And in terms of the tarot, specifically the page of wands, to me, and I guess in a general sense, it is one of the, 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 um, the meanings. But for me personally, the Page of Wands is very much a self-discovery card. It's almost like a minor arcana version of the Hermit. Um, and obviously, that's not here. We'll see what comes out in the rest of the reading. But I am getting a little a sense of that, of that vibe here, especially with some things that you may be letting go of from the past that I'm hearing have been holding you back, have been keeping you in, in less than this king of wands energy now the other thing that i want to say here especially for those of you that are connecting with a gemini and you kind of want this person to come forward just because the king of wands is here doesn't mean he's going to take action right away because yes the king of wands is very confident and knows exactly what he wants and it really is not afraid to go after it but the king of wands also knows uh, the art of timing it is also very, very even though he's very willing to go after something regardless of what someone else may, may say about it blah 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 whatnot whatever he's going to do it his own way also he's not afraid to sit back and watch and observe and wait for the right time to strike okay now also though for remote for a lot of you gemini's or i guess for the cross watcher here that's curious about what's going on with a, with a gemini they may be um, um, connecting with this this is in development I wouldn't say that many of you Geminis that are resonating with this right now are 100% completely in this King of Wands energy, but you're very much slowly but surely getting into that energy, getting into that mode, getting into that phase. And so that could be what's developing for you over the next two months, that being August and September. All righty, cool. So there's your pre-shuffle. Give me just a second here. Let me just, ooh, Ace of Cups. Yeah, new love. But see, oh, oh, with the Nine of Swords, though. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And then what else wants to peek through here? The Four of Swords with the Eight of Wands. Eh, not necessarily. More like the Four of Swords. But okay, there. for some of you out there, there is a sense of new love here. A new understanding about yourself, even. And this, yes, you could, you could be experiencing a new love with someone external to you but it is in fact a direct reflection of what is going on internally but that's where that nine of swords energy is coming from the anxiety the fear the sleepless
sleepless nights, maybe even the self-fulfilling prophecies. I feel like there are some things that are changing here for you, Gemini, and it's causing a ruckus, but the, the, the saving grace, the blessing here is that this change that's happening, wow, the chariot. Woo, you could be talking about a Cancerian. Um, but the change that's happening here is coming from a place of self-love with that Ace of Cups and also a place of balance, harmony, union within yourself with this chariot, understanding who you are, what you stand for, and what it is you truly want, and not being afraid to go after it. And then, wow, underneath the deck is the Ace of Pentacles. Gemini, there are some new starts happening for you, honey. Woo, let me tell you. Okay, wow, all right. Okay, yes, I'm telling you guys, the Knight of Cups with the world and then the Nine of Wands. But the Knight of Cups is an, a place of uh, uh, living from your heart center, okay? Becoming more emotionally mature, progressing from the Page of Cups to the Knight of Cups, which is bringing a closing cycle, closing out a cycle for you, closing out something, a major overarching cycle, an archetype that you no longer resonate with. For some, That's what I'm picking up here, all right, Gemini? I'm gonna, all right, enough, <laughs> enough with the flyers. Let's get into the rest of the reading here. Form a Gemini's. All right, one more shuffle. And here we go. Let's do this. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Gemini's, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of August, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Gemini, we're giving these five shuffles. We'll see what we've got for you. Form a Gemini. 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 I think of that every time, every time I'm channeling for you. Uh, brownie points go to whoever, whomever, whomever of you are Basement Jacks fans that knows what album that's from. <laughs> anyway, that was number two. Gemini, number three, Gemini, Gemini, <laughs> sun, moon, rising, and Venus for the month of August, 2019. Number four, best messages, please, spirit, and number five. All right, guys, here we go. All right, overall energy for you, Gemini. We've got the hanged man. Well, shit, in between a rock and a hard place, aren't ya? Yes, but this is good, Gemini, this is good. Why? The hanged man, yes, is stagnant, stuck energy, but it also is a type of situation that leads you to enlightenment, leads you to a change in perspective, leads you on a path towards a new cycle. Okay, this is also Piscean energy. So you could have Pisces in your, in, your, in your chart or you may be connecting with a Pisces, but only take that if it resonates. You don't, that, that, that's not really that important, all right? What's most important about the message right here is that there is a change in perspective that is happening for you, Gemini. You could have, you could be in a relationship with someone in which this is happening, this change in perspective is happening. Maybe they are influencing you and you're getting deeper into that relationship or the relationship that you have with this person is helping you see things clearly and is helping you break free, break the mold, okay? That's excellent. Underneath the hanged man, you've got the six of pentacles. And the first thing I wanna ask you, Gemini, is what is reciprocity to you? What do you deem to be a reciprocal relationship rather than what others tell you? And that is actually a big part of this change in perspective or this enlightenment that you are dealing with, okay? And it makes perfect sense if you are in a relationship with someone and you're going through these process, you're going through this process and you're, you're staying committed to the relationship, you're being faithful to it, but it's showing you where some sort of discrepancies lie in the terms of reciprocity then that's a beautiful thing, all right? Regardless of how it may turn out in the end, okay? Don't, don't focus on 
the end goal because I kind of feel, I feel some anxiety. I feel some anxiety, especially with that nine of swords energy that was coming through. What happens if this changes my whole perspective and now this relationship ends? Don't worry about that. If the relationship ends, then, then it was meant to end. It was more of a situation in which two souls came together, two individuals came together to learn more. That is to your typical soulmate relationship, okay? Underneath the Six of Pentacles, you do have the Three of Cups. Balance, union, celebration, the integration of body, mind, and spirit. This is more of yourself coming together, fusing together to, to defragment yourself in a sense. This is a celebration of finding pieces of yourself that you may have, feel like you have been disconnected from or have been lost to you for ages, centuries, 11-11 on the counter, okay? Underneath that, yes, Gemini, the Ten of Cups. Realizing what is your true sense of emotional fulfillment. This is you literally going through a situation in which you are changing your perspective in order to get a deeper sense of what this ultimate emotional fulfillment and unconditional love means for you so that you can really manifest it or bring it into your life. I love that, Gemini. All right. Getting into your, uh, your, the rest of your reading here, first set, second set, uh, I'm sorry, first half, second half of your reading. You can look at it as the first half, second half of the reading. You can also look at it as the first half, second half of your month, but just keep in mind that energies are fluid and time is an illusion, okay? So take it as it resonates, whatever works best for you. First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, you've got the Three of Pentacles. Yes, self-mastery. So you have the Three of Cups and the Three of Pentacles. Not only are you working on yourself from in the external realms, but you're, I'm sorry, not only are you working on yourself internally with like spirit here kind of, or like even your emotions with the Three of Cups, you're also working on yourself externally. Three of Pentacles, all right? I mean, this could lead to some sort of an entrepreneurship endeavor, but I'm really just picking up the sense of self-mastery here for you, Gemini. Three of Pentacles is coupled with the Queen of Cups. Yes, honey. So you have Cancerian energy here with the Queen of Cups, or you could have another water sign, Pisces or Scorpio. This could be the partner that you are with that is helping you master yourself, helping you rebuild. But also this is feminine energy that I'm feeling that's coming forward and allowing you or helping you, influencing you towards deep soul searching, getting acquainted with your emotions, starting to understand your emotions, starting to become comfortable with your emotions, learning how to surf the ocean of your emotions, okay? Because with this Queen of Cups here, you see she's looking, she's staring into that cup intently, all right? She knows her emotions like the back of her hand. And it's this energy that is allowing you or helping you or influencing you to do the same thing, okay? Second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, you have, the, there's that Ace of Swords again. Truth, honesty, integrity, realization, aha moments, understanding things as they truly are, seeing things as they truly are, seeing things from a new perspective, a new point of view. This feels very much internal right now. I don't really see or feel you expressing much of this. Of course you may, you very well may, but I just don't, I don't think that is a priority right now. It doesn't really need to be a priority right now. What is a priority right now is your, just purely your own understanding for yourself. So actually it may be best to not really talk about this with other people because you don't want getting, you don't want other people's opinions getting in and starting to cloud your judgment or starting to cloud the clar cloud the clarity that you are, you're finding or seeking within yourself. Okay. Ace of swords is coupled with the Page of Swords, yep, I told you, seeking clarity, looking, trying to understand. You are, it's well, also, actually, Gemini, this is you, in my opinion. I do see the Knights and the Pages as mutable energies, which would be Gemini in this case. Um, it could be another air sign too, Libra or Aquarius, but I really feel like this is you, Gemini, seeking an understanding, seeking the truth. And this is definitely, with it being a page, this is like an inexperienced individual. So this would be someone that would get into a situation in order to learn from it. Not necessarily that it needs to be the end all be all of a situation, but instead trying to learn, okay? Trying to understand. And that's, and that's influencing this change in perspective for you. Beautiful. So some of you actually may have gotten into a relationship 
in order to understand relationships on a deeper level. <laughs> Maybe you were kind of the player type with that King of Wands energy, energy that came out and now you're just trying to be more mature about it. That's beautiful. Gem, that's beautiful. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, you've got, ah, the Queen of Swords. There's that Libra energy. Could be you also. Also could be an Aquarian. Mm. You know, I I'm going to be honest with you. This feels like an external energy. This doesn't feel like your energy, uh, Gemini. For some of you, it could. For some of you, you are learning to temper this Queen of Swords within this... Um, I'm hearing fight or flight energy, okay? Others of you, this could be others around you. Maybe you have an icky reputation. I don't know, but like the challenge. Ooh. Also, for some of you, the challenge could be being able to stand up to a queen of swords. Being able to hold your own. Because this queen of swords energy is very witty, very smart, very intelligent. Um... Pretty, can be pretty sarcastic, knows how to throw some serious daggers with some serious precision. <laughs> and I just feel like you're standing up to this or you're learning to stand up against this energy. But this really, I mean, this really does feel like an external energy. This doesn't feel like you, Gemini. This is like almost like the world around you. But if it is you, it could be an energy in which you were just completely closed off to love, like not even trying, just keeping things completely surface level, not trying to go too deep, you know, whatnot, whatever, cutting things really quickly, like cutting things off very quickly, almost immediately. The Queen of Swords is coupled with, yeah, the Four of Swords. There's uh, the Four of Swords did make an appearance in the pre-shuffle here. Um, for some of you, this actually is you. And you, like I said, you're learning to um, tame, <laughs> tame the beast, okay? Um, you know, you're learning to, you know, pull back on the, on this Queen of Swords energy, on this, um, this just this ability to to just cut things out really quickly for others of you this is you needing to take a break in terms of the externalized energy that represent that's represented by the queen of swords it's either these people that are that are going through a similar process here of you in in terms of changing perspective because i do feel like well i i, I do see the four of swords as a minor arcana version of the hanged man in which you, uh, you, but here you consciously take a break and remove yourself from the situation to reassess and potentially gain a new perspective. I do feel like others around you are starting to gain a new perspective or at least trying to, or maybe it's necessary. And if you've been really trying to, to, to push hard to gain some sort of respect or to get it sort of change in perspective out of other people, you might want to just pull back from that because that's really not your responsibility. Even if you had a, a serious hand in how people may see you now, it doesn't matter. Uh, you really can't do much else than change your actions in order to get them to change their perspective. But even still, it is upon them to change their perspective. So you really can only do so much, okay? So actually, some of the advice here may be to like pull back or fall back in really trying to um, expressly get people to change the way they see you. Because that's only going to happen upon their own accord, okay? Regardless, no matter what you do. You could turn into a complete saint. You know what I mean? And they still might harbor some some animosity. Again, that is on them, all right? Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, you've got, there's the world again, change is a coming. Closing out of cycles, okay? Hard body, I'm hearing, hard body. Oof, all right, that's a big change. The wheel, oh, not the wheel of fortune, the, the world is coupled with the knight of wands. Ooh, that's some fuckboy shit, ain't it? <laughs> Well, okay. Um, whew, yeah, the, I mean, the Knight of Wands is an energy of, you know, wishy-washiness. It's an energy of here one second, gone the next. It is fuckboy energy. 
it is fuck girl energy. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be you know biased by gender here. I mean, you could be a man or a woman and still express this type of energy. Um, This is a closing out, and also there's there's a level of maturity here, all right? Because you're now, you're progressing from, well, you have a progression from the Knight of Wands energy to the King of Wands energy, which is what came out in the beginning of the reading. So yeah, you're closing out this cycle for, for real, for sure, for sure. And if you're a cross watcher and you, are, you were dealing with a Gemini in which they were expressing this energy, you are probably closing out the cycle in terms of accepting or allowing this energy into your life, gravitating towards it, manifesting it, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Okay, it could be your involvement or maybe even lack of involvement physically with this individual that is helping you to close out this cycle. All right. That's excellent. That is really, really excellent. Sec, uh, getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini. You've got, there's the chariot again. Wow, look at that shit. More Cancerian energy. Um, but this is balance. This is growth. This is, this is finding your true self, getting yourself in balance, integrating your, the, 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 the opposing sides of yourself, whether that be light, dark, good, bad, black, white, masculine, feminine, whatever, whatever however you want to see it although masculine and feminine is actually a, an ideal way of saying it, but getting those into balance and driving forward with that energy, with that momentum that's generated from this balance, okay? The chariot is coupled with the sun. Oh my God, that's beautiful, Leo energy. I mean, yes, illumination. The sun is shining. It's like you're seeing your path forward and there's almost an excitement and exuberance to get it going. or to move along with it, to move forward with it. I do feel a good amount of excitement, even though there might be a little bit of apprehension, maybe a little bit of fear, because it's almost as if you're driving into the unknown and you're doing the most that you can to not be, to, 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 to figure things out as much as you can with this Ace of Swords, Page of Swords energy. There's still a bit of excitement here because you're finally coming into alignment or not, or, will say you're finally coming into greater alignment with yourself and it feels really liberating all right this is great gemini second set of surrounding energies for the second half of your reading here jemmy gem we've got the knight of cups again there you go a progression from a page of cups someone who was probably emotionally immature probably pretty emotionally unavailable who is now growing into a deeper sense of maturity when it comes to the emotions all right That's excellent. Knight of Cups is coupled with the Eight of Swords. Ooh, is there still a bit of an, a, mental, a, a mental prison or is it an emotional prison? For some of you, I do, I'm feeling a pinch here because you're expanding, you're growing. It's literally like your heart is expanding and you're opening up to new ideas and new, new ways of being, new forms of expression, this, that, and the other. And yet, the more you open, ah, there it is. The more your heart opens and expands, the tighter and tighter this cage that you've been in gets. And the more and more aware of this cage you've been in do you become. But the beauty of this, Gemini, is that with this Eight of Swords energy, you have the ability to cut yourself loose. And awareness is the key to being able to cut yourself loose from something. You can't remove something out of your life. You also can't heal something in your life if you're not consciously aware of it to begin with. So I know this feels uncomfortable, Gemini. I totally, totally get it. But think of this as growing pains. You need to be aware of the cage that you've been in that's been holding you back before you can even break free to begin with, okay? Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Jemmy Gem, you've got the Queen of Wands. Looky here, there's the counterpart to that King of Wands. Hmm, what does this mean? Okay, bringing the feminine into balance with the masculine, definitely for some of you. 
also, again, this kind of feels like an external energy. This could be this relationship that some of you may be in that's igniting some sort of fi passion or fire within you. Or this could be someone else. Maybe if you are in a relationship, but then you have the, there's another person outside of the relationship that's really matching your king of wands energy. It could very well be that this external figure here with this queen of swords is, yes, an external energy, but it might maybe this is the individual that you're in a relationship with. And you're in the you're, but you're in this relationship with this individual, whether it's a man or a woman, um, for logical reasons, strictly logical reasons. And yet here you have this individual that actually matches your king of wands energy that would be way more passionate and fiery and loving and whatnot, whatever. Again, this is a general reading. Take it as it resonates. But that's kind of what I'm seeing. That's kind of the connection I'm seeing here. But I also am feeling an energy within you of the rise of the queen. Maybe the rise of the divine of the divine feminine energy within you. I do feel like the main challenge that is being brought to, to light here with this Queen of Wands in the second half of your reading is you balancing your king and queen energy. That's the big challenge here. Because, okay, so we really could be talking to like a masculine individual, whether you're a man or a woman, but it's about balancing this feminine aspect for the most part. Queen of Wands is coupled with the Eight of Cups. Ooh. Okay, well now I'm seeing it the other way. Maybe this Queen of Wands is an energy that is in fact resonating with your King of Wands energy and yet you need to walk away from this. Whoa. I mean, this is a general reading, guys, so take it how it resonates. However it fits for you is how it fits for you, all right? And if it doesn't fit, don't try and make it fit, but that sure is interesting. Now, also, though, for some of you, you need to walk away from eight neatly stacked cups, potentially with this individual that originally we were saying might be that individual that you're in this actual relationship, but strictly for logical reasons. And this would actually, this eight of cups energy would kind of corroborate that. Because, yeah, you've got eight neatly stacked cups here, but it's not the ten. It's not the ten which is your overall energy, which is what you're seeking to find, which is what you're understanding, which is what you're coming to terms with, what this would be for you. And so thus, you've got to walk away from something in order to find the individual that matches your King of Wands energy. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen right away. It may not even happen during the month of August. This, again, like I was saying, I was channeling, I heard August through September. So this could be an a situation that's, that's progressing, developing, and you're gaining this insight over the next two months, potentially. All right? But it doesn't have to be that way, okay? It, it could take less time. It could take more time. Who knows? Time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. But there you go. Closing message or potential outcome in the last, in the second half of your reading here, Gemini, you got the Ten of Swords. Yes, this is scary, but I like it because it's more completion. It's the closing out of energies, of cycles, of situations, of circumstances that have been doing nothing but beat you down and tear you apart. You're finally coming to the end of this. Ten of Swords is coupled with Holy shit. Holy shit, guys. There's that too. The two of cups. Something is leading you to end certain cycles or maybe I just heard relationships that are only giving you that eight and not completing your 10. Oh man. Oh man. Ain't that about a bitch. <laughs> I love it though, Gem. My Jemmy Gems. This is some good shit, y'all. Now, this is probably gonna be a little painful, Gemini. All right? I just heard it was painful to start out with. Ooh, 
For some of you, if you've made a decision to settle down and get into a relationship, that was painful just in and of itself. But now you're going through these growing pain, pains in association with it, but it's also kind of like a hurt so good type of situation because the, through the pain that you might be experiencing in this, you're finding freedom, you're finding liberation, you're finding the closing of these cycles. I'm hearing narcissism. You're closing out some sort of narcissistic cycles or whatnot. And if it's not, if you're a cross watcher for a Gemini that you were involved with or were energetically connected to, then you could be the one that's closing out these narcissistic cycles as well. And going out to find your, the two, cup, the two cups to complete your 10. All right? General reading, take it as it resonates. But ultimately, this is beautiful. This is beautiful energy, Gemini. All right, so let's close out your reading here and let's get you your Oracle guidance for the month of August, 2019. Best messages, please, spirit, to close out this reading from a Gemini. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I'm just being silly. Okay, here we go. Closing message, please, spirit, for my Gemini's for the month of August, 2019. Just one card, please, Spirit. Just one card. Best message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Geminis, for the month of August 2019. I'm, I'm going to let them, I'm going to let it fall out. I'm going to let it fall out. Best message, please, Spirit. Best message. There it is. There's two. Oh, gosh. No, no, please. <laughs> Just one card, please, Spirit. Come on. Come on. Best message, please. Best. There it is. All right. Card number 23. Defend to the end the worthwhile. Now, 23 does boil down to a five, which is change. And change can be very uncomfortable. And I just saw 32, 32 on the counter. Wow, there is a lot of change. So you could, hey, if you want to put it this way, that was a 555 five, five right there. We had 23 on the card and then 32, 32 on the counter. 555, five, five, y'all. Big change is happening. <laughs> All right. Beneath the illusions, pretty as they may seem, you know what is real. Beneath the lies, sweet, they, sweet though they may sound, you know what is worthwhile. All that is genuinely and truly essential for the heart to throb with life is worthwhile. Anything that dulls it or suffocates its vibrant aliveness must be ch questioned, challenged, and more than likely cast aside for the heart is our key to living an authentic life. What is there once, wait, okay. What is there once that was, that is, comp okay, so let me try that again. What is there once that is compromised? Without its foundation of truth, we are to be forever lost in confusion, doubt, and despair. You are a sacred warrior, a defender of the heart. You have cried genuine tears for your own grief and also the grief of the world. You have raged at injustice and oppression in your own life and in the world. You have felt the need to protect the presence of love, for whilst it is exceptionally powerful, it can too easily be smothered under lies and fear. The sacred warrior must not heed the dangerous voices that say, oh, stop being so sensitive. Stop making such a big deal out of things. Love is the biggest deal there is. What else is worth being so sensitive about? The sacred warrior is vigilant that the presence of love is not chipped away by fear, criticism, doubt, or untruths. Even if others find the unflinching honesty of your feelings difficult to handle, even if those feelings are expressed with gentleness and compassion, the sacred warrior honors the task of being more faithful to love than to anything else. This includes the fear of loss. Actually, it includes the fear of anything at all. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. <laughs> this oracle brings guidance to honor even the smallest steps in your path of the sacred warrior. They, they are no less important than the more noticeable or dramatic actions on the path. One single misstep can begin a landslide of great devastation. 
being vigilant with what is meaningful and what is truthful, even in the smallest and seemingly most insignificant ways, strengthens the sacred warrior and prevents darkness from gaining a stronghold from the inside. That darkness will be intelligent and sneaky. It will tell you that it doesn't matter, that this one time you can forget what you promised, that you are just one person and that you can't make a difference anyway. That darkness will lure you into sleepy ambivalence and dull your light if you allow it to. The sacred warrior within will find, well, I'm sorry, will fight with love and honor to be true to what has meaning and never, ever allow it to be cast aside, even if it seems easier in the moment. The sacred warrior finds joy and humor in life to prevent the seriousness of the task from stifling the heart that just wants to live and be free. That joy brings strength to the warrior and an expanded, relaxed awareness that can sense the presence of fear, whether it is masked as anger, hate, or doubt, and immediately respond to it with fierce compassion. The sacred warrior will not allow fear to gain a stronghold within the heart. This oracle has special guidance for you. You are being asked to stay strong and stand your ground. This might be in a big emotional journey that feels like the fight of your life. It may be in a matter that does not seem to hold much importance. Perhaps, for example, you are contemplating an idea that you feel could be something, but those around you declare it is nothing, much, too impractical, too little, or too much. However, what is happening, or soon will be happening, is worthwhile. So hold tight. Ask for help through the healing process below, which we won't get into. Stay true to the sacred warrior of love that you are and defend to the end all that is worthwhile. So there you have it, Gemini. I mean, yes, growing pains, I feel it. There is a little bit of a sense of um, lack of grounding here. I'm feeling it in my lower back. But you might feel like well, I mean, the, the ground underneath you is kind of rocky, kind of shaky, okay? So I get it. It makes perfect sense. So if you want to, I would recommend work on grounding yourself as much as you can. So that means um, getting out in nature. If you can, walk barefoot in like the grass or like on the, on the earth, the bare earth. And I don't mean like the concrete or anything like that. Or just be out in nature, do some grounding meditations, focus on your root chakra and cleansing and healing your root chakra because that could be where this unrest in the lower chakras is coming from your sense of security, your sense of stability, your sense of self also, uh, that is in flux and I can feel it. And it's, but it's, it's, it's challenging and it's a little painful, but it's good because it will turn out for the better in the end. All right, Gemini. So there you have it. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that said, I hope you guys have a great month and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of September. Yeah? Take care. Bye.